Cade's in the red. Nick's in the tie. I'm going to do my level best to give a brief synopsis of what these guys did this summer, but the scientific jargon may, uh, may catch my tongue in a few places. Cade uh, is a biology pre-med, exercise science and fitness management senior from Lumberton. Did research at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia at the Colcat Translational Research Building. He worked in vitro with signal transduction inhibitors and pre-leukemia cells and analyzed results using Western blood analysis. Towards the end of the summer, he also aided with in vitro mice work by obtaining CBCs of mice injected with inhibitors. Now, those of you that are highly familiar with that science could probably go on at some length explaining the rest of his work. Those of you not, there'll be an exam at the end of this session. <laughs> Nick Lucius, Nick Nicolucius, our second Beck fellow, was actually as an electrical engineer and physics major. Uh, she traveled to Taipei, Taiwan. Nick, I met when he was a freshman. He came into my office, I was brand new. He said, uh, I want to get involved in research. I said, Nick, you haven't even moved into your dorm, for God's sakes. <laughs> Well, Nick's been involved in research since he's been here, and this is what he did this summer. He worked at the Institute of Biomedical Sciences of Academia Sinica, the Laboratory of Medicinal and Vaccine Nanotechnology under Jack Hugh. Dr. Hugh is an expert in the area of hollow nanoparticle use for drug delivery, and Nick worked on research, new, researching new approaches in nanoparticle production and their encapsulation of different types of cargo. Now, most of you, I'm sure, at their ages were working on similar projects and can relate. But the truth of the matter is, these two young men are really exceptional, and it's a, it's a distinct pleasure to have them both with us this morning, particularly since school doesn't start for another week. So we appreciate you guys being here. Now I'd like to welcome Jason Henderson, LU's athletic director, who will give us an update on Lamar University sports teams and what we have going on for this coming year. Jason. Thank you, Dr. Evans, and good morning. It's exciting to see so many familiar faces out there in addition to a lot of the new ones as we get ready to start this new year at Lamar University. This building is where our men's and women's basketball teams play all their home games, as well as many other events that take place during the year. We have some great improvements that will be completed shortly here in the Montaigne Center. Thanks to a generous donation from Susan Con McCurry, a brand new video board we installed in just a few short weeks and if you notice, the old one is already gone. Along with that, we'll be putting in a brand new sound system and a brand new lighting system that will support not only graduation and all the other events that occur in the Montaigne Center, but all of our basketball games as well. Last year, we brought home four conference championships and we're looking to add to that this year. Our men's tennis team, for the first time in 40 years, won not only the regular season conference championship, but also the tournament championship. Our women's golf team won their fourth straight conference tournament championship, and our men's cross country team brought home another conference championship. Your support is a vital part of our success here at Lamar University. To that end, we want to be great partners with all of you and encourage you to attend as many athletic events as possible. We want to make sure that you're aware of the great ticket offers that we have for all of our faculty and staff. As a faculty or staff member, we offer you a 50% discount off the season ticket price for all our home athletic events. This will allow you to see some of the great action up close to personal for only a fraction of the cost. We want you to be a part of the best action in the Southland Conference. The home field or court advantage that you provide along with our students is second to none and made this an exciting place for us to compete and a very difficult place for our opponents. In addition to that, all faculty and staff on game day can receive two free general admission tickets based on availability, and we invite you all to take advantage of this. The basketball teams have great home schedules that we'll be releasing here in the next month that will offer you the chance to see some great teams play here in the Montaigne Center as they push for a conference championship. Volleyball will return to McDonald Gym in October for a tough conference regular season. Third year head coach Alan Edwards and the team are looking great this summer and plan on making big strides this season as they make a run of the conference championship in November. Our soccer team actually opens up play this weekend, Friday night against Texas State at the Lamar University Soccer Complex. 
Kickoff is scheduled for 7 p.m. and will be tons of fun for everybody there. New head coach Steve Holman has the young ladies playing well and looking forward to a promising season. The Lamar University softball team continues to grow and flourish and impress us each and every year. After a great run last year that ended in the conference championship game, the Cardinals look to improve on last year's run and win the conference regular season and tournament championship. After more than 40 years with the program, legendary head coach Jim Gilligan retired last season. First year head coach Will Davis has spent the spring and summer assembling a great recruiting class that will provide nonstop excitement this coming season as the Cardinals will look to improve on last year's run that ended in the conference tournament. And lastly, I want to make sure that you come out to Provo Sunfree Stadium this fall for some great gridiron action. Your Cardinals have a great home schedule that kicks off on September 3rd against perennial FCS powerhouse Coastal Carolina. The home schedule also includes exciting home games with Sam Houston, Southeastern Louisiana, Northwestern State, Houston Baptist, and the University of the Incarnate Word. This year's homecoming game will be on October 29th and will be a great day of fun of activities, including the homecoming parade that is set for 1 o'clock. Again, we want you to be a great part of the Lamar University Athletics and everything that we do. Take advantage of the ticket office and the offers that we have and come out and support our young men and women. Uh, they do a great job and we're very happy to represent the university. Thank you again for all your support and we look forward to seeing you at many future home athletic events. Thank you, Jason. I, I likewise encourage you to take advantage of the, the opportunities that the athletic programs provide. You know, it's interesting, we were hoping for this event, when I look up at the ceiling in this empty space, that the new scoreboard that would have a digital display on it would be able to do, when we're doing commencement, for instance, be able to watch the students walk across the stage, which is great for folks that are in the back of the, the stadium, but unfortunately it didn't quite work out. And I'm also sitting here listening to the buzz of these speakers. <clears throat> I know you are too, and you're going, when are they gonna finally fix the sound system? Well, that's also part of this, uh, this project as well, so please bear with us as we work our way through that process. I'd like to welcome Allison Flossia to discuss the campus's sustainability efforts. She's the university's director of sustainability as well as an instructor of information systems and analysis in the College of Business. You would be hard pressed to not see the work of Allison on campus with all kinds of recycling activities she has going on, a variety of other things. So with that said, Allison. we're doing on campus this year and since I can't give you a quiz to make sure that you're paying attention Jason is going to help me by throwing frisbees every once in a while whenever I say the word project and since we didn't practice this maybe toss a few out yeah okay and Mark I know you're in the back I just want you to know I paid for those with my own money so people get to keep them yes thank you Okay, so we don't want to hurt anybody, so please pay attention. And um, Okay, so one of the exciting projects woo, that we're doing this year is the creation of a second community garden. This garden will be for anyone at Lamar and people from the surrounding neighborhood. So think about signing up for a garden plot, and we also need a lot of volunteers for our workday on October 8th. Another project... Good job, Jason. No one person is paying attention to me. Um, we're also going to try to increase our membership in the LU Green Squad. We hope that everyone on campus, employees and students, will join. You can do this through Org Sync, and the instructions are in the green flyer. And that'll give us a way to notify everybody of the events that are happening, volunteer opportunities, and just cool information about sustainability. And this will help it make it easy for you to help with our big spring project, the National Recycle Mania Competition, where we're going to compete against other universities and colleges. One of my students here, yay. Um, this past spring, Richland College in Dallas was the grand champion. So please sign up on OrgSync so we can tell you when that competition starts and what you can do to help us get um, some participation. Um, we're also partnering with the Dishman Art Museum for a project this fall, the Jamie Stillings exhibit, 
which starts September 23rd, and it combines photography and his environmental interest in the exhibit entitled Jamie Stillings, The Evolution of Ivanpah Solar. So it's going to be really cool. If you get a chance, please go and see the exhibit. And the last cool project I'd like to tell you about is the ride-sharing program offered by Southeast Texas Planning Commission. They provide a database to help people find carpool partners, enroll in the emergency ride home program, and be eligible for regular prize drawings. This is everyone, everyone at LU can um, sign up for that. And we have a table at the back. If you didn't get a chance to stop and talk to them, please do. Um, we have a lot of other projects going on this year, so please join our group on OrgSync to keep up with what's happening. I don't know if anybody's caught those yet. Has anybody caught one? Yeah. <laughs> but it's okay. I, I had a professional doing this, but um, anyway, thank you for supporting our projects. And if you want to just go ahead and throw the rest of those out, thank you. We especially want to thank the custodial and grounds crew for helping with recycling and email me if you have any questions. Please hang on to your green flyers. Um, take some for your friends if they couldn't be here. Thank you, Jason. Good job. Um, take these home, put it under your pillow, frame it for the wall, memorize it, and when you think you have it all memorized, you don't need it anymore, please don't throw it away, right? Recycle it. Okay, and um, thank you, have an awesome year. Thank you, Allison, and I, I think thank you, Jason. <laughs> to work on the curve there a little bit, Jason. But as we look into this uh, coming year, I want to thank all of you for what was clearly a very great year last year. And, 2016-17 promises to even be greater. Those of you that uh, have been at Lamar for a while remember that at this event, we used to introduce, one by one, all the new faculty and staff. Well, we're welcoming 202 new full-time and part-time staff members and 97 faculty. And since I did commit to breakfast, I wasn't prepared to commit to lunch and dinner. <laughs> so we decided that maybe we just ask the 202 or those that are here, and of those, the 97 new faculty, if you'd please rise, so we could just give you a round of applause and welcome you. I'm going to ask you to permit me a few minutes this morning to share with you a, a glimpse of what's happening at the university. Uh, those of you that are in the statistical realm or at least pay attention to data acquisition and accumulation know that when you're trying to compare one year against the, the last, particularly in academe, you have problems about matching up calendars and that creates problems in terms of being able to estimate enrollment. To the best of our ability at the moment, we're estimating we'll be up about 200 heads of student count over where we were last year, which will then put us in a record position in terms of enrollment. But the truth of the matter is, the sequence of the calendars are off by about roughly two or three days. And while in your world that may not seem like it makes a great deal of difference, in the admissions world, it makes a huge difference. And particularly since so many of our students are online, we may end up with a significantly larger count in terms of total growth than I'm able to report to you now. I'm reluctant to share what that number is estimated to be, but I can be with some certainty able to share with you that will probably have about 200 roughly students. How did we do this in terms of growth? Well, we've done it in a variety of ways. One, of course, we've done it through the immense growth we've had in the online space and will continue to have. We also invested very heavily in recruiting and resident students. Now, we did that for two reasons. One, we obviously wanted to grow the campus. And two, an in-resident student population has a much higher probability of matriculating. They, are, they retain better. They achieve six-year graduation rates that are infinitely superior than what you would get with 
other compositions of an undergraduate student population. So as a result, as we change sort of the portfolio, if you will, of the undergraduate population, we're doing it very deliberately to help enhance the ability of this campus to be able to retain and graduate students. Let's put some numbers to what's been happening recently. When we started in the fall of 2013, the occupancy in the student residence halls was about 2,000 students in the fall. In the spring, it dropped dramatically down to about 1,700. This fall, we're expecting in-residence student population to be in excess of 2,300. And based on our retention rates that we had last year in the spring, we probably expect to see somewhere in the vicinity of 2,100 to maybe a little bit more than that in the residence halls. The outcome of that is the students are involved here on campus, and the net result is, is that we tend to matriculate them far more successfully. The recruiting efforts that we've engaged in in Houston, Central Texas, and Dallas, we expect about 200 net new students out of that recruiting effort who are first-time freshmen, and about 100 net new students and transfer students. So the consequences of the investments we're making in the recruiting effort are paying off. Let's turn back to the undergraduate student population for just a second and talk a bit about retention. Retention is a challenge here and it has been for some time. Our commitment this year is dramatically different than we have seen in the past. We will embark on integrated retention strategies that will include learning communities, we already started those last year, early career advising and counseling activity, inclusive activity, excuse me, academic advising, accelerated college enrollment, financial advising, which they call bridge loaning, and summer academics and bridge programs, and much more. In addition, we've extensively invested in a rich fabric of the undergraduate student experience. You were introduced to two students who had tremendous experiences at the undergraduate level, but hundreds of our undergraduate students are involved in research projects and a whole array of other activities facilitated by many of the faculty in this room. This summer, a couple weeks ago, I was invited by Kumar Das, who heads this program up, to visit uh, over lunch with a group of undergraduate students that were involved in undergraduate research program. Forty students applied to participate in this program, of which only seven were selected. Their projects again ranged in areas that I'm sure you spent a lot of your summers dealing with, uh, in advancing hearing science, robotics, high-speed switches, and electrical engineering, mathematical modeling, and much more. I'm going to admit this, I found the acronym rather uh, curious. The acronym for the program was SURF, summer undergraduate research fellowships. I grew up in Southern California. My experience of surfing was a tad bit different. So in addition to all these undergraduate research experiences, we also have over 150 student organizations that provide diverse opportunities for engagement at the undergraduate level. And lastly, I just share this with you because I think that the numbers are so pertinent. Three years ago, we started an undergraduate study abroad program actually includes some graduate students. We're putting 40 students abroad a year. 40 students. This year we put over 180 students abroad. They were in the United Kingdom, Italy, St. Lucia, Japan, Iceland, Costa Rica, Mexico, South Korea, and Spain. When we started the, un the undergraduate research, uh, excuse me, undergraduate study abroad experience, we said we were going to get to 200 students by next year or the year after. We were told that was impossible at Lamar. I love it when people tell us that kind of stuff. Who we educate is critical, no question. The success of our experiences here at Lamar, but how we educate them is equally, if not more important. We've engaged in unprecedented, you know that today because of the number of faculty we're introducing to you, unprecedented faculty recruiting and staff recruiting as well as administrators. That group of new leaders and faculty are joining a tremendous faculty and staff here already at Lamar, providing a stimulating, committed intellectual community dedicated to student success. We're committed to the supporting research and creative activity. We just recently announced uh, five net new distinguished faculty fellowships, which we added to six we'd identified the year before. We now have 11 faculty on campus that are either in distinguished research or teaching fellowships. I'm going to add to that list, and you always do this at risk, because when you start naming people, 
There's a list of people that you should be naming that you're not, but I'm gonna take that risk anyway. I'd like to recognize a number of other individuals who had uh, in really important recognitions this last year. I'm gonna start with Jim Rush, Director of uh, Scholarships, who was chosen as the fourth recipient of the Texas State University System Staff Excellence Award. SUNY Lee, Associate Professor of Organic Chemistry and Interim Chair of the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, received this year's Faculty Mentor Award. Daniel Chen, Professor of Chemical Engineering, was selected as the 2016 University Professor and this year's University Merit Award went to four junior faculty, Ricardo Colon, Rebecca Weinbaum, Shwini Kutnor, and Evan Uchik. Steve Zani, Professor of English and Modern Language, delivered a distinguished faculty lecture entitled Monsters in Literature and Philosophy, Vampires, Zombies, and Bears. Oh my. <laughs> For those of you not in attendance, I'm gonna tell you it was a delightful evening. Fascinating presentation. And Coomer Dobbs, Associate Professor of Mathematics and Director of our Office of Undergraduate Research, received the Julian Ben Rogers Community Service Award. And that is but a sampling of the contributions and recognitions that our faculty and staff have received. The work of our community and the bold new initiatives you're advancing requires suitable space. We will have planned either new building or renovation work of approximately 300,000 square feet of construction over the next three to four years. The amount of capital improvements that are going on in this campus is unprecedented in the history of Lamar. It ranges from a building that's just about ready to be turned over to us, I can't wait to receive the keys, the Wayne A. Rio building and an honors college. Partners will begin moving in in a few weeks. The new Center for Innovation, Commercialization, and Entrepreneurship, that building is well on its way. The Setzer Center and the Quad Remodel is slated to start in October. The Science and Technology Building, which we will begin next year, Library Remodeling, Theater Renovation, a new Music Annex, Hayes Biology Building Renovation, Plumber Hall Renovation, and New Residence Hall is probably slated to begin in either terms of partial completion or full completion by the fall of 2019. And I'm actually not listing it's an amazing array of activities that are going on at campus. We leave here, Nancy and I leave shortly after this event, hit the road for Austin. Yes, we're back in Austin again, lobbying on behalf of the university for the next biennium. It just seems like the last one just finished, the 84th, but we're preparing for the 85th. The session, quite honestly, doesn't promise the largesse of last. I would be disingenuous if I were to suggest anything other than that. But I think it's important to be mindful of the success we had last year. We had the largest operating budget increase of any institution in the Texas State University system. That was absolute numbers, not percentage numbers. So that compares against Texas State, Sam Houston, which have much larger student populations. We had the largest percentage increase in HEAP funds, higher education assistance funds. We had a $60 million TRB. We had two exceptional items that were supporting the court program and the air and water quality program of approximately a little over $4 million. So that said, I'm still expecting some modest success from the state legislature, and goodness knows I'm not gonna wind her up there, I'm not expecting to get something in return. However, that being said, the campus has made a commitment to advance initiatives irrespective of what the state might do. So with that being said, this last year we advanced the Visionary Initiatives Program. 49 different Visionary Initiative proposals were submitted, of which five were approved. They include the Center for Advances in Digital Education that provides opportunities for the educational sector to advance its capabilities in administering and deploying uh, digital education opportunities for students. The Center for Digital Technology and Health, Health Disability it's a fascinating topic area. Stroke victims have been found to respond very favorably to digital simulation tools. So we're finding ways to potentially advance and accelerate the capability of individuals in that space to, to hopefully heal, at least partially. A center dedicated to flare and abnormal situation management research with petroleum and chemical process initiatives. Those of you new to this area may hear that and go, what the heck is he talking about? Well, the petroleum industry has a way in which it releases pressure. And the way it does that is it flares. 
And when it does it, it's both inefficient for the petroleum industry, and it's also not terribly healthy for the public around it. So we have a number of engineering faculty who are some of the leading people in the world in helping minimize flare activity in petroleum facilities. And likewise, there are a variety of safety issues that surround the consequences of that. And hence, we're dedicating time and energy to advance our capability in that space. Those of you that have been in Southeast Texas for some time recognize that we're an interesting blend of Cajun and Texan. We have an interesting history of industry, starting with lumber moving to oil, clearly the Beaumont Port being one of the largest ports in the United States, and a whole array of other characteristics that are distinct about this area, not to mention the characteristics of our weather patterns, which are fascinating. So that being, means to say the last day would be a good, a good illustration of that. So with that being said, a, a center dedicated to really advancing our understanding of the culture and the nuances of Southeast Texas makes a great deal of sense. And why not make that up more? So we're investing in advancing that. One of the things that you experience when you, uh, you recruit undergraduate students is you recognize that the game is changing in that space. Uh, competition is rapidly accelerating and our capacity to compete in that space is dependent upon the changes we make here. Those of you that work in the social sciences know this for a fact, though sometimes in the hard sciences are increasingly becoming aware of it, but the reality is problems today are messy. Messy problems are not solved by silos. They're solved by cross-disciplinary initiatives that bring the talents of all the intellectual property in this room together to make solutions possible. You can't start the undergraduate experience telling an undergraduate student that you're going to become a silo, and then you're going to enter the world and make a difference. So we're going to take our undergraduate experience at the freshman level and give them an opportunity to work on messy social problems in cross-disciplinary teams. And we'll start in a seed-funded area with about 50 students and then advance that into a much larger program. So that, too, is a visionary initiative that we've committed to for this coming year. Lastly, regarding budget, and most likely a topic that's of some interest to you, we're committing a 3% faculty merit-based salary increase for this next year. We're going to do something different at the staff level. We're committing to an inflation equity increase of $1,000 plus 2% on base, or 3% on base, whichever is greater. You all benefit from the staff in this room. And the reality is that the compensation at the staff level has needed attention for some time. I'm not going to suggest to you that that rectifies the problem, but I am going to suggest to you that it's a positive move in that direction. This would not have been possible without the work of Cruz Melvin sitting on the stage with me and Twyla Baker. So let's give them a round of applause. For Let me end by reflecting on an often stated comment made by Nancy and me when asked what has surprised us after having been at LU for a little over three years now. The most striking attribute in our mind about LU is its faculty and staff. We've been here, we've been at three other universities, all of which were prominent in their respective states, some of which were flagship. <coughs> Undergraduate students who attended those institutions were frequently of middle, upper middle, upper class families. Academically and financially, they could have attended any one of a variety of universities. And in fact, you could argue that where they went to school was really of little consequence because their likely trajectory in life was one of probably probable success. LU, on the other hand, because of the social economic market we serve, and our efforts to provide an affordable education is not a way station on a predestined course, but rather a transformative juncture in our students and their future families' lives. So why are people so passionate about this place? I believe our history, present, and future of educating worthy students with a highly dedicated group of faculty and staff is what tells our story. The surprise then to us is the deep passion each of you has for LU, and it runs throughout the university enterprise. 
Quite honestly, I've never experienced anything quite like it. Thank each and every one of you for the passion you display and the difference you make. It's a pleasure to see all of you at the outset of another semester. Let's have a great launch to the year, and as always, know that what we do makes a difference in the lives of those we serve. I am obligated to tell you that at the back of the room we have LU Police that's here to hand out a gift to all of you, so please make sure that you stop by there and pick it up. And then please join me in thanking our cheerleaders and band members in Big Red and Lou, and have a great semester.